their sins and depravity. <laughs> Sorry, Doug, that must be over at Archery Auditorium because tonight is the Hungry Arts Cabaret! <laughs> so, who's ready for some sins and depravity? Let's hear it! <laughs> I can't hear you one more time. <laughs> is that all you have? <laughs> Alright, hey. I'm Doug from Sun Entertainment here at NAU. Um, we are super happy to be working with Momentum Mary again for the 10th annual Hungry Hearts. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Oh, wow. I'm not even that old. Anyway. Um, Sun is a student-run organization on campus that provides events like this, concerts, movies, all kinds of stuff, run by students for students. I um, also want to thank Procknell Auditorium staff for all their work for this, and Peaks Audio for making it look and sound good. Hi, everyone. My name is Morgan Livier, and I'm one of the co-owners of Momentum Aerial and also the technical director for tonight's Hungry Hearts. Yeah. And I am Lisa Reed, the Hungry Hearts Cabaret Artistic Director. Um, and I also am a macrame artist. 
this. So if you are interested in buying some Nakame titties or vulvas, come see me in the lobby during your mission. Sexuality is culturally specific 
specific, and there are particular topics, or I'm sorry, there are competing positions on topics. The panel is not here to take a stance on any particular topic, rather the panel is a conversation, and there are no right or wrong answers. Panelists are each simply responding from their cultural stance and are simply speaking for themselves from their highest representations, lived experience, and education. We will also assume that in every question that consent is implied, unless the question is specifically about navigating consent. Here at NAU, we like to define consent by using the acronym FRIES, meaning that consent is freely given, reversible, informed, enthusiastic, and specific. So if anything comes up and you need a referral to resources, such as counseling, or to make a disclosure of any kind, please see the resource table in the lobby to connect with trained professionals who can support you. With us this evening, we have NAU Health Promotion and a representative from Coconino County Health and Human Services. So with that, let's get the Love Advice show started. <laughs> Because you do need to talk out 
everything. <laughs> if you don't have a solid base of communication in your relationship, you are not going to be able to do non-monogamy. Yes, everyone could read this. Um, step one, talk everything out, talk about how you're feeling, and you're going to bring up some awkward feelings about exploring a thing that you've never explored before. Um, and it's okay to get on the same page communicating by starting with, I have something I want to share with you because I feel very strongly, but I feel very awkward sharing it and I feel kind of vulnerable about it. Can, is it okay to have this conversation right now? That's totally doable in every part of your relationship. In fact, we had that, uh, that exact conversation with our roommate last night when they wanted to share something about um, some cool thing they saw on YouTube that they thought it was weird to share. Um, I hope I'm not outing a performer who's in the wings right now. But you can start a conversation with, this is how I feel about a thing, is it okay for me to bring these feelings to you? Saying that something is awkward, saying that you're vulnerable is fine. Start there move your communication towards what you want, what you feel about your relationship, and then eventually you'll wind up at the point where, is it going to be weird if we do this in Blackstaff? And the answer might be yes, and that's okay, because Blackstaff wants to be weird. Awesome, thank you so much for that answer. And we have a great one from tonight that I think Abby, you would be amazing for answering this question. Using a vibrator. That is a 
great question. Um, the big answer is no, you cannot desensitize yourself by using a vibrator, that's a huge myth. What can happen is you can pattern your body if you're only having an orgasm one way. So we want to offer variety to ourselves so when we understand how to orgasm, when we understand the fullness of our body and our sex and all of our parts and pieces, then you can expand into moving into different varieties of way. But if we're grabbing the same vibrator in the same spot every day, we can make a habit out of it and the body receives that stimulus and then starts to need the same stimulus. So it's good to shake it up. Maybe use three different kinds of vibrators. For your fingers. Other things. So you're saying that those settings have a purpose? The settings have a purpose. <laughs> All right, let's open it up to the audience. Does anybody have a live question you want to raise your hand and one of our Mike Ferry will come to you. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> but I did want to ask, like, when you're like first starting like with a relationship, you know, you find someone you're really into, and you know, you're getting in, you know, getting it on, that kind of thing. What would you say personally, from what you've experienced, have been some like kind of red flags, you know, just like maybe classic ones or something like that, just personally? Personal red flags in the beginning of a relationship. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like what are some just, you know, red flags when you meet someone that you like and like, you know, something kind of just, I don't know, just feels off. I'm trying to get my so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say like maybe one-sidedness in communication. Is there a red flag off the bat? If I'm always calling first, if I'm the one setting up the date, if I'm always texting first, I'm like, do you really, like, do you want this feeling or not? Are you, are you, gonna, are you want this or not? I think the reciprocation off the, off the rip is really important. I want to know that you want it just as much as I do. I want to know that you're going to be able to spend time as much as I want you. Um, maybe some personal experience of this for a, a big red flag at the time. So, okay, then. A red flag for me is when me and a gentleman friend are going to the bedroom for the first time and they say, Can you just put the wig on? <laughs> <laughs> and the true intentions are revealed! Okay, and that's why you gotta talk about it beforehand. Uh, the wig is, does not stay on during, no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trevor. <laughs> I also think a big red flag is any sign of non-consensual behavior. If there's, you know, even the teeny tiny thing, can I hold your hand? Can I give you a kiss on the cheek? Where do we start the consent is always at the beginning. Would you be willing to go on a date with me? Not we're gonna go out, right? Or I ghost you and play games with you back and forth and then I tell you what we're gonna do, leaving you waiting, like what you're saying, Stephanie, that reciprocation but sign, any sign of non-consensual behavior. And it can always be addressed, right? You can always have open-hearted communication and say, hey, you know, I was concerned about this, and maybe we can talk and change. And if they're not willing to talk and change, there's another red flag. I would say a use of you language instead of I language is a big red flag. If someone can use I first language and talk about what they want and what they need and what they feel, that's green flags. If it's more along the lines of you're wearing that or oh, that's something you do? No. <laughs> I, I don't I don't put up with judgment stuff. I, I really enjoy someone being like, you know, I really like getting hit in the head with a shampoo bottle. <laughs> That's a good use of island. As long as it's not two in one. Or three in one. I see some of you college boys out there. Too, is if you are with someone who also 
so it isn't a good listener and wasn't told that they had two ears and one mouth, um, that's also a huge red flag, so, which I think also encompasses all of that. I don't have a good pickup line, but I have a really bad one. <laughs> Baby, I'll put the STD instead. <laughs> now all I need is you.
to expand your sexual horizon into something new other than that pattern sex, one, two, three, blam, penis and vagina, that fake shit that we see, excuse me, in the, in the secular movies, right? Sorry, I don't know. I'm passionate about that, because <laughs> it's wrong. I want to have sex in 30 seconds, it doesn't work that way. My first thought was like more sensuality than sexuality. The touching and rubbing and kissing and playing without even getting there. It's still just as hard. Awesome. Let's have one final question. for someone who is not available for a committed relationship, but still desires companionship and sexuality, but doesn't want one night stands or one night culture. <laughs> the thing you just said, say that. It's the, the thing that I see that is absolutely wild to me in like, dating culture and dating apps right now is people not being upfront about what they want and what they are available for. Like, list your bandwidth. If you are looking for that thing, you, you say like, I am tied up with my job, I am tied up with my primary relationship, I am moving all over the place, I've got this much space. I want to have a nice friendship with someone where we can go out and get drinks, we can go out and see a movie, we can fuck and it's great and we're not tied up in each other and we're really only seeing each other maybe a couple times a month. Like, you shouldn't have shame in saying the thing that you want because that will attract the person who wants the thing that you have the availability for. Say the thing. And the hard part is putting the grips. Get, getting a lot of, getting a lot of left swipes, getting a lot of conversations that go nowhere because you're looking for something specific instead of casting a wide net and winning a way. Start with a specific man. Say that thing. So and I just wanted to add too is what is our definition of relationship? Because <clears throat> relationships don't have to be committed. Relationships can be what we make them. I have a relationship with each and every person on this panel. I have a relationship with this audience, right? So what, how are we defining the relationship? And that's at the heart of it. We can have a relationship that is committed to occasional casual sexual encounters. Also with the last part of that question, it was, you know, who's someone who's not interested in hookup culture, um, right? And you know, maybe something more casual and, but you know, it is really as far as you want to take that with your partner. And I think um, some of the best are, you know, where you don't define it, but you love each other in your own special sport of way. And I was on your website earlier. Yes, yes, it's a good website, audience member. I think you're gonna be up here on the panel sometime soon, I heard. Yes, yes. What's your name again? Sean Galanos uh, for love coaching, y'all, right? Yes, the love coaching, yes, yes. That's right, hit him up. There's a website, it's good. I just want to co-sign what Heather said. Relationships can be whatever you want. I have a great relationship with a friend of mine that could be defined as Instagram mutuals that a couple times a year get together to tag team her boyfriend. And that's fine. <laughs> Labels are hard, but relationships can be whatever you want. Revolution.com, R E V, pull out your phones, R E V E L U C I E N. It's coincidentally the same as my Venmo and my PayPal and my Zap. Yes, and my Cash App. Yes, but you can see me performing all over. Uh, follow me on Instagram or on the website to see where I'll be performing.
performing in town. Um, but also, would you like to see me put on something a little sexier to perform for you later tonight? That's what I thought, passing it off. Momentum by Hawk Scholarship. So it's worth the money and you'll get your 